A jobs report coming up. We just mentioned manufacturing. You're in manufacturing, also technically in tech. Mm -hmm. um, what's the hiring environment right now for you? Do you expect to be able to hire, and do you have to hire at, at higher wages? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the hiring environment for us is strong. So a headcount since January of 2020 uh, is up 28%. Um, and, you know, we've seen an easing. I think that... Um, that the, like I'll give you an example, Indeed.com published recently 15% uh, reduction in job listings on their site mm -hmm. since the first quarter of 2023. Uh, and if you picture the, the labor pool, the pool of talent being stagnant, but demand for employees going down, um, you know, that's something we see. It's, it's definitely okay. eased for the business. I want to talk wages in particular. Uh, ADP report out earlier this week, they reported for medium-sized firms that fits your company uh, between 50 and 249 workers. Um, the average increase for a retained worker, somebody who stayed there, was 6.1%. So what are you seeing for you? You have a pretty wide employee base. You have software developers. You have footwear designers. So what kind of wages, just roughly, are, are you having to pay to keep people? There is no question. There's an increase in wages across the board. So whether they're people who work in our retail division or in tech development or in the e-commerce part of the business, across the board, we've seen an increase. Uh, one of the things we do to counter that and to shore up retention is work hard at corporate culture. And uh, one of the things I think we've seen more recently is is everything's eased in terms of uh, COVID and restrictions, bringing people back into the office, having everybody face to face, uh, being able to do things like monthly events. We have ice cream trucks, right. dogs at work, you know, <laughs> communal areas. And we do a little of, bit of that here. Yeah, all those things are, you know, things that really impact your ability to uh, have low turnover and high retention, which we do. All right, let's talk your business also uh, in this higher for longer environment. So your top selling shoe, that's the Jillian, right? Yes. So it's been the best seller for the last eight months. I'm not that familiar. i got to read some of this. <laughs> last month, you debuted several new styles, including the Lily, the Kristen, and the Tamara. I think some of those are named after your That's wife true. and your, yeah, my your brother's, brother's and wives. My wife, okay. yep. <laughs> um, and when you put out a release, you emphasize each one of these is built on an existing platform you already had. So give us a sense. Higher rates. How does that impact your decisions for innovation and putting out new styles? And also to your customers, who are mostly retailers. Your customers are your wholesaler. You sell to retailers. Um, their ability or willingness to hold inventory? Give us a sense of both. Hmm. That's, that's both good questions. So for our business, we have a strong balance sheet. We have no long-term debt. So interest rates have been less impactful uh, for us, really just more short-term cash flow um, challenges that are, that are relatively minor. But there's no question uh, in the business writ large for the retailers we work with uh, that carrying costs are higher. Uh, inventory levels were higher because of challenges in the supply chain uh, in 2021, 2022. Uh, so there was a reluctance. There was limited mm -hmm. open to buy in the marketplace. Um, and that's something that's easing. We see uh, still strong consumer demand. So our sales, fortunately, are very strong. We've had consistent double-digit growth, uh, but nonetheless hit into those headwinds. So how do you resolve that? Does that lead you to extend more credit to these retailers, or does that lead you to push more to your direct-to-consumer channels? Yeah, you know, both of those answers are true. So we work with the tools at our disposal, uh, whether they're things like terms, um, or, or good, good packages that are, you know, have incentives of different sorts. Uh, and, of course, the direct-to-consumer business for Atrex is, is crucial. It's powerful from a branding perspective and, of course, powerful from a bottom-line perspective. What well. about brick-and-mortar stores? You have one here in New Jersey. We do. Um, higher for longer right now. Does that make you less hesitant to try to open up more stores? And then also you have to staff them. Staffing is a challenge. All the retailers we work with talk about it. Uh, there are all different kinds of reasons for it. You know, the government pumped trillions of dollars into the economy coming even out of COVID. Um, people were, uh, employers were willing to spend more for people working from home. So there are more opportunities. Uh, there are, you, okay. What you hear about people not showing up to interviews and all this, but we, we've done well. We work at you know, training and making them experts, creating a great customer experience so they love their jobs.